Hey guys, SGT here, and I have a very special guest on the line. She's a brilliant writer. She's new to the scene, but she's moving mountains all on her own. Her name is Suzanne Posel. You know her work from Occupy Corporatism, Activist Post. You know her work from Infowars, from SGT Report. Everybody is picking up Suzanne's material. Suzanne, welcome. Thank you for having me. Suzanne, you're really a great writer. I really have to give you kudos on your your Thank research, you. your hyperlinks, you know, your vetting, your information, uh, and that's why everybody is picking up your articles because they're very, very detailed. But you're talking about some very scary things. We do that too here at SGT Report. I talk to a lot of smart people. Uh, I spoke with James Wesley Rawls not too long ago, who said, and I quote, "We're entering into an age of deception and betrayal." by our own government. And Suzanne, that's basically what you've been writing about across the board, whether it's vaccine information or your article titled, U.S. Army Tactical Manuals Describe How to Control Domestic Insurrection. Why don't you let people know why you wrote that and what it means? Uh, I wrote that because there's a bunch of articles that have come out. It started with Rex 84, and uh, it's it's, uh, turned into a bunch of uh, manuals and a bunch of executive orders that put in place martial law. And uh, the military likes to perform war games, so that's why we're seeing military on the streets practicing. Uh, They are actually practicing. Um, The the tanks that we see on the streets and the uh, National Guard patrolling neighborhoods and and, uh, the practices that they're doing with our local police department, this is all in preparation for martial law, so that when they do actually lock down the country, they've got everything secured. People that don't run in these circles and to whom this information is new, Suzanne, they love to say that we're all conspiracy tinfoil hat wearing nuts because we still live in a republic. But I think what we're starting to see for anybody who is objective at all is we're seeing a totalitarian system now unveil itself. And ever since essentially 9-11 happened, it's been more and more of these draconian measures that are leading us right down the road to martial law. What do you think will be the cause of the declaration of martial law? Will it be a financial collapse or something altogether different? We've seen a lot of false flags. What do you think would be the cause of martial law? Well, um, I had written an article uh, earlier this week uh, from a a U.S. Marine informant um, and also a Deutsche Bank informant. And in 2008, we should have collapsed. We should have gone the way of Greece. The only reason why we didn't was because the global elite and the banking cartels put it off on the Eurozone and collapse the Eurozone in order to gain sovereign debt. Sovereign debt is when you actually own the physical land. You don't just own the buildings. You don't just own the people and the money. They're extracting wealth so that the only thing that the, that the governments will have left to give them is the actual land that they own. While they're doing this, they're, they're amassing this wealth in order to uh, redirect it toward Uh, martial law endeavor, and not just in America, but globally. They want to lock down every country and force us into global governance, uh, eventually force us into um, a global reserve currency that is like the Bancor that the IMF has been pushing. So in 2008, um, when uh, Hank Paulson went to the Congress and said that they had to bail out the banks for $700 billion or martial law would be declared, They weren't lying. They went ahead and passed that, and they gave this money to the Chinese. But the Chinese since then have been backing their currency, uh, their fiat currency, in gold. And uh, China's been doing this, India's been doing this, and um, Russia's been doing this. Okay, so this is just to confirm that I'm here trying to make a mortgage payment in cash. I have $1,380 sitting in front of me. Uh, for $1,371 mortgage payment and Bank of America is rejecting a cash payment of my mortgage Sir, here in, Ke- in uh, Lakeport, California. Is that correct? So you need to turn that off. Is that correct? You need to turn that off, sir. This is what I've just been told. Bank of America has just refused to accept my mortgage payment in cash and is insisting on a kind of a wire transfer. Uh, apparently in America, cash does not pay the mortgage anymore, is what I'm being told today in Kelsey, in uh, Lakeport. If you go back in history, the reason why we went after Gaddafi was because he was presenting the dinar, which was a gold-backed um, currency that he was getting together with other countries uh, like in Africa, 
he was going to subvert the global reserve currency, which is the U.S. dollar, and uh, destroy its complete value by backing it with gold, because the central bankers haven't dealt in gold since 1934. So um, in order to avoid all of this, the central bankers are going after Iran right now, and that's what this war is about, uh, to try and stop India and China and, and Russia from buying Irani oil with gold. Because if they destroy the global reserve currency, which is the U.S. dollar, then what we're going to have is uh, we're going to wake up one morning and we're going to be like Greece. And that's going to cause complete panic in this country. So since they already set off the financial time bomb in, in the Eurozone, they know that it's just a matter of time before it hits our shores. So they're preparing for it. Uh, that's why we see all the, all the movement on the streets. Uh, people are seeing tanks being moved in Burbank, California. Uh, they're seeing um, in their forested areas, they're seeing uh, uh, police, military, escorting them off the property. N national forested lands, this is public land, supposedly. Um, by the way, it's owned by UNESCO, and it's a World Heritage Site, so it's actually owned by the UN. But anyway, um, people are seeing uh, military uh, on their streets. In Anaheim, California, they announced that uh, because of the protest, it was a state of emergency, which I feel is, is a code word for martial law. I think they're trying to beta test to see if they can go ahead and lock down the country um, by doing it incrementally through different stages causing problems, problem reaction solution, causing problems in cities, and then go ahead and locking it down and seeing how it works, kind of like a war game. One thing I forgot to mention was uh, through the Deutsche Bank um, informant, I was alerted to the idea that um, they're going to possibly um, create like a, uh, an Internet virus that would attack the banking system, you know, like they're using Flame and, and uh, Cessnet. And uh, there's a new cousin of these two that is going around um, Iran. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they would do was, on a Friday afternoon, they would say, well, we have to shut down the banking system because there's a virus in all the banks. Uh, you won't be able to use your ATMs over the weekend, but on Monday morning, you'll be fine. Well, if you hear of anything like that, you have 72 hours before they roll out martial law. So wait a minute, Suzanne. You're saying that if you see anything like that in the news media or otherwise you have 72 hours? Why don't you repeat that, help people understand what that means? When they're going to roll out uh, martial law, they're, they think that when the, uh, when the uh, financial collapse hits the shores of the United States, they have 72 hours. Um, so with my Deutsche Bank informant and uh, talks with other people in, in the alternative media, my contacts, um, I just think that it's possible that a scenario like this, I'm not saying that this will happen, but a scenario like this, and it would give you something to look for, a little red flag to look for. Let's say that the, uh, the banks all say that there's a virus in all the banking systems, all of the banks, and they have to shut down, like on a Friday. Um, we know that uh, the Obama administration loves to do things on a Friday afternoon or when we're celebrating New Year's Eve. <laughs> so um, Friday afternoon, they would say they're going to shut down the banks and get rid of this virus over the weekend, and on Monday morning, everything would be back up. Over the weekend, you wouldn't be able to use your ATM or pay any bills online, um, but everything will be fine on Monday morning. That is your red flag. You have 72 hours from that moment um, to do whatever you were planning on doing, get to wherever you were planning on getting to, um, hunker down whatever you were planning on hunkering down because they're going to unroll martial law in 72 hours from that moment, whatever uh, scenario they, they intend to unroll. And I believe that it has to do with, with the banks, because they're stealing money from us left and right. In fact, I've gotten reports from uh, insiders that they're taking money out of um, private checking accounts. They're also stealing um, heirlooms. Uh, the Bank of America has stolen heirlooms out of people's um, uh, safety deposit boxes and reship them from one coast to another and then claim that they didn't know that it wasn't uh, that it was this customer's uh, property and that they'll send it back but they never do. Um, they're trying to squeeze out as much money as possible. And uh, with MF Global and John Corzine, that was a beta test to see if they could take um, secured customer funds and get away with it, and they did. They're coming for our private checking accounts next. Um, they're looking for as much money as they can to fund this uh, not only domestic but global police state. Um, so like I said, if you hear of anything with the banking industry, and I personally think it might be a, uh, 
a false flag with, with an Internet virus or a virus in the banking system as far as their computers go, um, then you have 72 hours from that time to go ahead and, and do what you were planning on doing. Wow. Well, I mean, we don't know if that will happen, but if it does, if people see these signs that Suzanne just talked about, Suzanne, you may have just saved some lives. I mean, for those who live in inner cities, in big cities, in scary places, be it downtown Chicago, New York, L.A., you may have saved some lives. People can get out if they have 72 hours. If they don't have but a couple of hours and there's traffic jams, they're not going anywhere. That's really frightening information. Uh, let me ask you this. In your article from earlier this week, titled DHS and U.S. Military Make Final Preparations Before Announcing Martial Law, about six paragraphs down you wrote, the acquisition of armory by the DHS and contracts for bulletproof glass for checkpoint booths to be positioned strategically throughout the nation on public highways have heightened awareness that the U.S. government is preparing for a well-planned domestic military action. DHS armored vehicles have been sighted on highways in Kentucky and across the country, I might add. I guess what I'm wondering, uh, Suzanne, from your uh, expert view, do you think that the military could actually lock down this country? We're geographically gigantic. They had a hard time locking down Baghdad. Um, the reality of this is that the PSYOP, I think, is against the people, to get the people to stand down before any of this ever happens. Because if they move on Chicago or any major American city, it's going to send a message to the rest of the patriots in this geographically huge country that it's time to take action. It's time to embrace the Declaration of Independence and throw off these despots. Uh, what do you make of what I'm saying here? What do you think the reality is of them being able to lock down this country in any sort of martial law capacity? I agree with you that it's going to be difficult, um, and that's why they've done beta testing. Uh, the NATO summit, we saw that they were trying to do that there as well. Um, they have al they've allocated foreign troops. They've been uh, training with the Polish Army and the Russian Army. Uh, the Russian Army has shown up in Colorado. Uh, there have been reports that the Russian Army have been starting the fires. And uh, the reports that I got, um, that I put in that article that you just mentioned, um, the, the, the fires were started right in front of areas that were militarily secured. So it's my understanding that they, were, they might have been starting the fires to try and get people out of the way. Um, get people uh, moved out of the way so they wouldn't see what they're doing. Um, DHS has contracted independent uh, contractors to uh, cover up the holes for the um, underground bases that they're building. Um, so their use of foreign troops, which goes right back to Rex 84, uh, back in, in the early, uh, early 80s, um, I don't think they're going to have a problem. They're going to bring NATO forces onto the streets and, uh, and to work with them, and that doubles or triples their their military capacity i think they're going to definitely try this um i think they're going to use foreign troops along with them the foreign troops also serve two purposes um their extra security and also if something does happen well they can blame it on the foreign troops and you know, they can say oh my god the, the polish army was here oh the russians were doing this we should go and get the russians now yeah i think what this government is now doing with these false flags that we with what I'm calling these false flags that we saw in Aurora and in Wisconsin, is they're doing their level best before martial law happens to disarm the people. What do you make of what I just said there, and what do you make of what I'm calling false flags in, in Aurora and Wisconsin, Suzanne? They are definitely false flags. Uh, James Holmes had ties all the way going back to his grandfather with DARPA and mind control uh, techniques, and he was studying mind control. Uh, he worked with the Salk Institute on my mind control and flicker fusion, which is where they insert uh, images into the, into the screen while you're watching television or even on a website, and it moves so fast that it, only your subconscious picks it up. In Aurora, his, his apartment was, was booby-trapped with, with uh, homemade bombs, and um, the Pentagon has just come out and said that a lot of people are homegrown terrorists, are building these homemade bombs. And so they have Congress, they're asking Congress to relax posse comitatus in order to respond to this, to allow mil 